Hey, welcome to the Philadelphia Money Show here in the historic. It wasn't the, was it the Capitol? The Constitution was written yeah, here anyway. Yeah, oh yeah, absolutely. Uh, I'm John Dobis from Forbes, joined by Stephen Shork, the author, the editor of the Shork Report, and what you focus on are commodities markets, more particularly energy, right? Absolutely, and mainly oil and gas markets. Oil and gas. So about a week and a half ago, there was an attack on Saudi uh, oil facilities, knocked out five and a half million uh, barrels per day of production. Oil spiked up 15 percent, 20 percent in one day. Here we are oil is back at the price it was before the attacks. What do you think of that? Yeah, absolutely. Of course, we had the obligatory knee-jerk reaction with prices spiking in the Brent crude oil market. We had a record one-day spike in price. But to your point, two weeks later, prices are now lower than where we were before the strike. So clearly, what we're looking at is the change dynamics in the oil markets. The inelasticities of demand have completely changed. There are two things that drive price. You mean price. the demand is more elastic now? Uh, absolutely. Okay. absolutely. People will replace oil and gas with other energy producing sources? Absolutely. So you need two things to drive the price of a commodity. You need a price shock and you need a substitute. We've never had the substitute. We've always had that first variable, the price shock. We've had those 73, the Arab 79. oil embargo, the Iran-Iraq war, Saddam's invasion of Kuwait. So we've always had those peaks and troughs in price. But up until the last five years, we've never had a viable substitute. And of course, I'm talking about EVs, pure electric, hybrids, so forth. We're just now scratching the surface, and clearly the days of oil, or king oil, uh, are long in the past now, and we're looking at long-term structural decline in the oil markets. You know, I've heard that, that theory advanced by people, and you, you tend to dismiss it at first, thinking, oh, come on, we're not going to stop driving our cars, but mm -hmm. look at what's happened in the last 20 years. Absolutely. Out of, you drive the highway uh, from New York to Philadelphia just yesterday, I saw you know, a lot of Priuses and other makes and models of cars that are electrically powered. I know that you need to still generate electricity right. somehow, oil, natural gas, coal, nuclear. Right now, you, you've still got a, a oil demand there, but, but as far as vehicles go, we've, we've already seen a little bit of that transformation, haven't we, in the past two decades? Oh, absolutely. We're, we're smashing electrons now to drive our cars. And I'll give you an anecdote. I bought a SUV, a hybrid SUV, so it's a plug-in, so I do burn gas, but, but rarely. So whereas 10 years ago when oil prices were at $150 a barrel, I was filling up my SUV, my gas-only SUV, every six days. Today, I fill up my hybrid every 60 to 70 days. So every time you see a Prius, a Honda, Leaf, uh, any sort of electric EV out there, that's a considerable amount of oil demand that has been lost, and it's never coming back. So the days, the headline here, I guess, is the days of $100 oil are long gone. You think that we'll see $30 oil before 100? Uh, I think the risk in oil prices at this point is lower rather than higher. Absolutely, so 30 before 100. All right, Stephen Shork from the Shork Report.